Hello and welcome to today's training session for QQ Evolution. Today we're going to be covering the image section. The image section is in course inside the client store. So we're going to access clients. Here we come into the search screen. You see here's a list of my clients. I have a very small database. I already have a client, client highlighted here. And what I'm going to do then is go to images. But always remember, since everybody has their own individual little buttons up here, always remember to choose your client first, no matter who it may be, before you go to wherever you want to go. Besides, you know, if it's other than images, maybe you want to go to activities or memos, always choose your client first. And now we're going to go up top here and click on images. Right here in our image section, you see I have nothing stored right here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to scan directly into our client. You see up here on the upper left, I'm on still my client Tim Johnson here. First off, what I want to do is click on Select Twain Source. When I click on this, it's going to open up a box and it'll enlist any of the devices I have hooked to my computer that has what's called a Twain driver on it. In order to scan directly into the program, your scanner has to have a Twain driver. That's basically kind of a generic driver. Most scanners come with them. If your scanner is not listed in here, it's one of several reasons. Either A, it doesn't have a Twain driver, and you can always go to your scanner's company's website and look for your scanner, and usually they'll have one that you can download. Or maybe it just doesn't have a twain driver, period. Um, and there's a way around that. You'll see that in a second. Uh, another reason it wouldn't show up here is maybe the scanner isn't turned on, maybe it's not plugged into your computer, and maybe it's not installed properly. So you'd want to check the basic things first. Do I have it turned on? Um, is it connected to my computer? Can I scan directly to my computer outside of this program? If all that works, um, then I'd say your, your scanner probably doesn't have a twain driver and see if there's one available. So you would select your driver and hit on select. So now my program knows what scanner I'm using. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on the scan button. And you're going to see my scanning software pop up here. Hold on a second. Um, here's where we're going to put in our description. We're going to put in a test image. We're going to choose what policy this scan goes to. Let's say it goes with this policy. I can choose who's doing this. I want to select to show scanners users interface when, especially when you're first starting out with the software, you're more used to your own scanners interface. So you're going to want to use this at least for the, for the beginning. Plus you want to make sure everything is set up properly inside your scanners interface. Here where we have prompt for pages, two, three, and etc. This is for when you're using a flatbed scanner. I can check mark this and then I can put how many pages I'm doing in here. And then when after it scans the first page, the program will prompt me to put in the next page. If I have this unchecked, it will say separate pages. That means I'm using a sheet feeder and I want to make sure everything scanned in is as a separate page. Now the one drawback of doing that is when you do that and you scan say five sheets in at one time to this client, it will label them all with the same description. And when that's the case, um, there is a way around that. You can always edit and change your policy's description. Or, I'm sorry, change your image's description you need to. Now you also want to make sure you have force black and white check marked. Okay, we want that check mark. Scanning color simply takes up too much room. Okay, you can scan as many images as you want on any given client. Okay, but there is a file size limitation. I'm going to give you that limitation right now. Okay, and the reason we set these limitations is we were having some people not realizing what they were doing and scanning in, say, a photo of a driver's license and saving it at, say, 20 megabytes. Huge. That's a huge picture. It takes forever to upload, eats up tons of space, and it was totally unnecessary. So we have a little bit of a limitation here. What it is is if you are doing a PDF document, a .pdf document. It has to be six megabytes or under. You always want to try to do under. So PDF document, six megs or under. If you are doing a TIFF document, a doc, dot .tif document or an image, TIFF document has to be either two megabytes or under. Again, TIFF has to be two megabytes or under. If you're doing a JPEG document or image or any other type of image, like say a document, uh, a, Word, a Microsoft Word document or so on, that has to be one megabyte or under. So just quickly again, PDF, six megs or under, TIFF, two megs or under, JPEG or anything else, one meg or under. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm using a flatbed scanner, so I'm not going to check mark this. I'm going to go ahead and click scan, and my scanner is going to pop up here. You see I'm using an HP. There's lots of different scanners out there, lots of different types of scanners for that matter. And it's preparing to scan. Every, as I said, everybody's different. You see here on mine, I have a new scan button and an accept button. Some people could have a button that simply says preview and then scan. Everybody's is different. Now this is going to take just a second for it to warm up. So you see it's going ahead and scanning what's in here. And you know what? I think I might not have anything in here, which would not be helpful, now would it? So let's go ahead and find me something to put in here. 
so that we can scan something. Um, let's see what we got. Uh, let's see, this is a picture of some old report thing. Let's go ahead and um, we're going to put this in here. All right, now we're going to go ahead and scan here. So I'm going to click on New Scan because, you know, I didn't have anything to scan before. I scanned just a blank screen. Doesn't help much. You can't see anything there when it's blank. So I'm scanning this in. This is actually a picture of one of our postcards that goes out. So it's actually a little postcard. And now here it is. And my my scanner is set to automatically crop, so it automatically cropped, cropped what I wanted for it. Um, but yours might not be set for that, so you might have to use your keys to change the cropping. So you see, I did scan in black and white, because obviously it, uh, if it's a postcard, it wasn't color, but I did in black and white. I don't need it in color. Now, your scanner's user's interface has to be set properly as well. It also has to be set to black and white. Generally, you're going to want a resolution of around two to three hundred that should be perfectly fine okay anything you want to reprint or email from there should be just perfectly fine not any problems whatsoever all right so now I have what I want again I'm in black and white another reason to scan black and white by the way is so that you can do one document as multiple pages instead of doing a document one document as five pages and having it scanned separately which would happen if you did it colored if you do a black and white it will scan it all in as one five page document so I'm gonna go ahead and hit on accept here so that it does the permanent scan of this image it's gonna take it a few seconds here so just hold tight with me for a second All right, there we go. Now we're back to quick file. So as you see, look how well that scanned that. And that's a postcard. Nice picture perfect here. So now here's our image. Now if I wanted to view a larger version of our image or if I wanted to email it, I simply just double click on it. Now I see a larger image of it. I can go ahead and I can zoom in, zoom out if I wanted. I can click on print and I can choose to email this if I wanted to. All right, let's go ahead and hit cancel here because I don't want to do that. I'm going to return back to my image screen. So that's how you can scan directly into the system. Okay, and you can scan as many, as I said, as many images onto a client as you want. We simply have that size restriction that I already told you about. Now, other things you can do in here is, let's say you don't have twin drivers. Okay, you don't want to have to go out and buy a new scanner just to scan directly into one program. You can go around that. Or maybe you have something already saved on your computer. Maybe you saved an email onto your computer or an attachment or something like that. And you want to get it saved here in QuickFile. I can use the attach button, which I already have something saved in here. This, is, this already defaults to our image import folder on your computer because it isn't yet up on our, our computers yet, on our servers yet. We're browsing your computer itself. So I'm going to click on Browse, and I'm going to find some to go ahead and uh, attach in here. Let's see what we got. Let's see if we got any good pictures in here. Let's go ahead and let's attach this, and let's put in a description. Let's just do uh, image 2. We can choose who's doing it, and hit OK. Now, which policy does this image go with? So I select my policy. You always want to do that. I hit OK. Now it's uploading my image up to our computers. And now here we have it. Oh, how did that get in there? Now it's still uploading it. That's a picture of me really excited this morning because I knew it was Friday. I was very, very pumped, and I still am because I'm doing this on Friday. All right, so there's our image. Now you can also what's do what's called a detach image. There's two purposes behind this. Maybe this is image. I attached this maybe accidentally to the wrong client. Okay, or maybe I want to permanently get rid of this image off this client. I don't need it any longer. So I can click on detach image. You're going to get the question, are you sure? So be sure what you want to do by the, at this point because you're going to have to do either of the, one of those two things. You're either going to have to remove it from this client or permanently delete it. So we're going to answer yes, I'm sure. And it asks you this question. Delete image with a question mark. So if I answer yes, this image is going to be deleted. But as it says, selecting no will move the image into our image import directory. So it simply detaches this client and puts it into one of our directories. So we're going to answer yes. Whoops, I deleted it. Shoot, sorry about that, guys. Let's select this one. That was totally my fault. We're going to do the, whoops, we're going to go ahead and do the detach again, only do it differently. Of course, I'm trying to go a lot faster than I'm, I'm actually doing here. Okay, detach image. Again, we have, are you sure? I'm going to answer yes. Now, this time I'm going to do it right, and I'm going to select no, and it's going to remove it from this client. 
So now it's no longer on this client. Now I could go to a different client or I could stay on this one, but I could go to a different one. And just to show you that that does work by going to a different client, let's go to, uh, we're on Tim Johnson. Let's go to John Test. Go back to the image section. We'll click on Attach. You see it's already waiting for me in my image import folder. I can type in a description. Choose who's doing it and click on Attach. It's uploading it. And there you go right here now it's on the other client okay it's got its policy associated with it uh, I put in the date that I did it in the file name you can also edit your description you know I put in description of image one here I can click on edit and I can image it, uh, edit it if I need to which I don't need to so I'm not going to you can also click on add pages to selected file and this is only for TIFF documents you can't do this with JPEGs uh, or with PDS and so forth now this was scanned in as a TIFF so I could click on add pages and it's going to go up and bring my browse box again so I can click on browse and I can go ahead and select another item to go ahead and and put in here let's go ahead and do this and let's put in um, this one here would I want to attach this bitmap file to the, and it will become black and white is that okay yes Ooh, that was my supervisor I caught taking a nap the other day was very soundly sleeping didn't even hear me when I snuck up on him so now I have went ahead and I attached it in with this one image. So now there's actually two images here. All right, and that is basically our image section. Okay, so you can scan directly into our software or you can attach items that are already saved on your computer. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use. And again, that's our image section. Thanks.